wanted to welcome you to The Gayest Generation, where we hear LGBTQ elders speak for themselves. Every episode, we sit down with a different member or members of the LGBTQ community who laid the foundation for the freedoms we have today. Their stories make noise where there was once silence, and that silence has gone on for far too long. It's about time we let their voices fill the room. In this episode, we sit down with Bob Enzer and Rick Ferrand. We'll hear about what it was like to be a closeted parent raising a lesbian child, the magic of falling in love later in life, and how small town communities came together to support those suffering from HIV AIDS. Due to adult situations and language, viewer discretion is advised. This is The Gayest Generation. My name is Bob Enzer. I'm 77 years old. I'm from Saginaw, Michigan. Uh, I identify as a gay male. First of all, we're so glad that you guys are here. Um, We're so thankful for that. But how I've been starting, or how I think, because this is my second interview, um, how I've been starting them so far is, um, when did you realize that you were gay? Uh, <clears throat> well, um, it must have been at least uh, uh, in high school, but uh, it wasn't as if gay was a, a single identity. So it was, I, first of all, I'm, I'm a male, mm-hmm. so that was the first thing. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I always, when I had a paper out, I used to um, dream about having another guy come along with me as a companion. I did have a dog, too, so that helped. <laughs> and uh, she was a very good dog. I always followed, never got in the road, because well, it was a it was a place where there were no sidewalks. So I had to, well, it was uh, rural. But uh, so that was. Uh, then uh, when I got to college, I sort of put the idea of uh, sex and uh, gender, sex, and everything else uh, away for a while because Mm -hmm. I was uh, very concentrated on getting my education. Mm -hmm. So it didn't mean that uh, I wasn't thinking from time to time of sexual matters. It's just I knew that uh, it wasn't the time of life for that. And I think that a lot of people in similar situations as you, is you take your gayness and you put it in a box and then you put it somewhere. Yes, that's a a very good point. And uh, of course, I was a bit afraid because at the time that I was uh, young, uh, being gay was of course not uh, an acceptable lifestyle. So I I would read about uh, people who were gay that were able to be open from in history, actually, it's uh, history in the 20th cent- early 20th century, late 19th, uh, more than anything else. I, I remember reading about uh, a man named Carpenter in England that had uh, a relationship with this, another man. And of course, I knew about Oscar Wilde. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I was interested in uh, other examples of, of uh, people who were gay so that... Uh, uh, and then, uh, I, but as I say, I didn't uh, t- uh, think of myself as ever wanting to be openly gay at that time, because it was um, uh, not something that uh, was uh, generally accepted. So, and when you went, yeah, go ahead. Can, did you have a, a lover in college, though? That in college in Robert. Yeah, in college, indeed, but I was already a graduate student by then. And uh, he, let's see, well, he was working in his office, and and I was a graduate student at the time. And so uh, we did 
meet, and uh, that was in, as, as I say, I was already, uh, my fifth year, actually, in college. Mm -hmm. So by then I knew that uh, they were coming to a close of my college career, and I could be a little more relaxed. And, uh, yeah, then we, and he had more, uh, he was f not from Michigan, he was from the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he, of course, had more experience. And so, uh, indeed, we did have a... Uh, relationship for several weeks. Uh, I was just about, uh, my classes were just about over. It was uh, at that time. So, uh, and that was my first real uh, experience as a gay person. So, you realize that you're gay. You see other gay men represented in history. Yes. You have a gay relationship, um, a tryst, whatever it might be, whatever the word, and then you meet your future wife. Uh, I already knew her at that at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, I met her as a junior in college, and that we she was a boarder in the um, rooming house that uh, I lived in a male rooming house that uh, we made all our own food. It was called a co-op. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, Ann uh, Arbor is ripe yeah. with co-ops. Okay, and I was in Ann Arbor. <laughs> and, uh, oh, are you a University of Michigan? Indeed I am, ah. yes. Yeah, so. How did I not? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> yes, I was, uh, I was here in Ann Arbor, and uh, uh, she came in as a boarder to our rooming house, and uh, we headed off fairly well, uh, right off the bat is uh, so we dated and uh, but of course it was uh, uh, I was more focused actually on my <laughs> my academic work than uh, she was she was only a uh, sophomore at that, at that time and I was already uh, a junior which and isn't that much different but anyway so we went together for a while but then uh, she wanted, she was becoming increasingly wanting to be more serious mm -hmm. than uh, I did. And so, I, actually, we broke off on Valentine's Day. Oh, one of those. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And because I said, well, I got to focus on my work. I th I'm trying to think of it. It wasn't in my junior year. I think it was by the time I was a, a senior. I was a senior, but not a graduate student. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she was, uh, so it had been a year that of investment for her, I think. And she was a very strong personality person. She liked to be in control of situations, mm -hmm. which was fine for me because sure. I was not uh, a particularly aggressive type. I was more interested in um, book scholarship and in classes. And actually, I helped her with the... Uh, she was taking uh, biochemistry at the time, and so I helped her with that, even though I hadn't had biochemistry yet at that time. I only had through organic chemistry. So that was a help for her, which was nice. And, uh, and I thought seriously of, of uh, being with him longer. But uh, You said, hey, I'm going I'm to give this a go. I thought about that, yes, mm -hmm. uh, very seriously, because I, I'm the kind of person that... Uh, is not into uh, having many partners. I, I never was. I, I sort of. How do people juggle it? Uh, well, I can't even. I can't even bother <laughs> with myself. And these people are like dating like six people at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. that, that, well, the thing is, I was concentrating on a lot of my work, and uh, but anyway, we. Um, uh, so what made I, you decide I, not to pursue it? That's a good question, and that's and I'm the kind that. Uh, thought that we went on a trip together to Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. and that area. He knew of a, a gay couple in Washington, D.C. area. And so uh, it was not easy because I took my parents' car. One, they had two cars, and uh, it was, I was finished with my college uh, semester, and he wanted to go uh, traveling a little bit. He was finished too. Uh, and so we went, out. he wanted to go out and visit some friends, graduate school, uh, friends, school friends of his in the East. 
And so I said, well, maybe I can get... He didn't drive, by the way. He was from New York, and they don't drive there. I don't drive either. I feel like gay people don't drive. Oh, well... <laughs> maybe you gay people it's drive. It's a lot safer, I'll say that. Hey, there you go. Uh, anyway, he never drove, and so I, we went uh, to my house in Saginaw, and the car was in the... Uh, one of the two cars, because my mother had a car and my father had a car, and they were on a vacation themselves. And I said, well, uh, why don't we just take this car? We're only going to be gone maybe in nine or ten days. Mm -hmm. and so that's what we did. So we went to, to Washington, D.C. I met a very nice man, and they were older people, and he didn't meet his partner so much. Uh, he worked at one of the museums in uh, Washington, D.C. And uh, so that's when I seriously th I started thinking about uh, having a partner. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, this is long before Stonewall and long before partnering was common. Uh, most gay people were not partnering in those days. And I said, well, I don't think that uh, we're really meant for each other because he, he had a stronger personality, again, like uh, the lady that I had dated earlier. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, well, I don't know if it would work out because... Um, I, I wanted to go uh, be independent, and uh, he wanted to go to graduate school some other place besides Michigan. And I didn't know if I wanted to go with him wherever he wanted to go. And besides, he was uh, a bit controlling mm. and uh, a stronger in personality, let's say. Uh, in, actually, not stronger in personality, but more uh, self-oriented. Self-orientation rather than other orient. I, uh, my own parents, they they sort of considered what the other one wanted always, and that they shared a lot of things. So I had a good uh, uh, couple uh, model at home mm -hmm. as to how, and it wasn't easy. What was like that happened, and then y you married a woman. Right. What's, there's, talk there's, about that in-between time. That in-between time is when I was uh, a freshman in college, uh, John Kennedy, John F. Kennedy, was a candidate to become president, and he mentioned the idea of the Peace Corps. Mm -hmm. And so all through my college life, I had that in the back of my mind that I would like to uh, go travel somewhere and a, be a teacher someplace. Mm -hmm. And where was your gayness at this time? Was it still in the box? I, very much because you didn't get, you. if you wanted to go to the Peace Corps, you, you didn't want people to know you were gay particularly. Especially gay abroad. Well, I don't know if it's gay abroad as much as uh, they, you have to have, uh, they have to have a background check before they accept you into the, mm. at this the time. Uh, the Peace Corps was just getting started and of course, uh, they didn't. I think it was about the second year of the Peace Corps that I was accepted, second or third year. And uh, at that time, the Peace Corps itself was uh, just starting up enough. They didn't want uh, to have a, get a bad reputation. So they. So that's another thing in the back of your mind, so yeah. to speak. So anyway. Um, we, I went in, I knew I was going to go into the Peace Corps, so I told Robert, this uh, friend of mine, that uh, you know, that was my plan for the summer, and this is the spring of that very same year, 65 it was, 1965. And so I said, well, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to do this first. So uh, he went on to school, and we did correspond a little bit, but not a lot. And so we knew that this was sort of an ending because I was I had to go to California for training. So that ended that relationship. And that's an easy break. Hey, that's right. I'm going to California. That's right. And it, so it was not. None of my my breaks haven't been uh, precipitous. And mm -hmm. I don't like precipitous breaks anyway. I, I don't like to. Uh, I don't want people to feel bad when about situations. Of Unfortunately, uh, that's part this part of my personality. Don't like to have people think meanly. Uh, so, it, so as it turned out, uh, then I had to. Uh, 
I, then I discovered that he went into the Peace Corps too. Wow. And, uh, I, and I think he went into it mainly because I did. Because yeah. okay. uh, he'd already been, uh, he was a year ahead of me. So he, uh, he had been in graduate school two years when I only was in graduate school one year. While I'm in the Peace Corps, there two things happen. Uh, one is that my friend is in Kenya and I am in um, Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. They're only a plane ride away. Yeah. So the first year I was there, I, uh, and one of our vacations, I went to beat him. And so it was fine. We got along pretty amiably, uh, to say the least. Uh, and uh, he was uh, at a, uh, outside the big city of uh, Nairobi, that near Nairobi. He was in a smaller place. Mm -hmm. Thika is the name of it. I remember now. Thika in Kenya. It was a very nice little town. But th by that time, uh, and I met him, uh, m my future wife was uh, started writing to me. Ah. And she, we had a correspondence during all the while I was in the Peace Corps, actually. Ugh. But she wrote, started writing to me again. So I knew she was interested because, you know, women don't bother writing to men unless they're fairly interested. <laughs> they, that's not their way. Uh -huh. w women are always looking around, looking for prospects. <laughs> And, uh, Me so, and women share that in common. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sorry at any rate. That's all right. <laughs> so were you still diddling with Robert while you were getting these letters uh, from Ruth? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Remember, he's in Kenya. <laughs> you got to get to the exciting part, the good part. He's Rick's a, the tabloid reporter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's in Kenya and I'm in Ethiopia. And, but uh, you but I visited. Did, we did visit. This is the same Robert. That's the same Robert. Yeah, this is the oh, same yeah. Robert. And the same oh, yes. Ruth that he dated. Well, remember. First. And he decided to go on the Peace Corps separately. Yep, that's right. The, I'm using air quotes. Yes, separately. We did. When we, yeah, but it, and so All the it, while, this woman, her name's Ruth. Exactly. Ruth was sending you letters. Yes. And the easiest way to fall in love is via letter. <laughs> well, maybe it is, but I, I already had been attracted to her. She was a nice, sturdy girl. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I like sturdy people, that, I, men me and women. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, it, so it, there has to be a chemistry between people in order to, to have a satisfied intimacy. And that chem that chemistry existed, and you felt that over the letters. Indeed, i well. It, 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 when we dated, there was chemistry, but it wasn't uh, for me. Uh, I don't. I don't engage anything dangerous sure. w without commitment. Indeed. Let's put it that way. So, uh, so anyway, so uh, if we had broken up, you remember, mm -hmm. uh, in uh, my junior year, so I was real surprised by, because this would be a year and a half after that breakup that we started um, corresponding again. She had actually gone to uh, my parents to get my address. Wow. Uh, so that uh, she wanted to, so I said, boy, there's somebody that really has, uh, is a go-getter, mm -hmm. and I admire that in a person. And that's what you were attracted to. Yes, yeah, so, uh, so, we, so I, I had to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Do I want to be in an iffy situation with Robert, who is very bright, and brighter than I was, probably, uh, or, well, I don't say probably, I think he, he was, but, but you were telling me you were choose, you were making a decision between an iffy situation. That's right. And what what was the other option? The other option is to marry Ruth. And 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 and, uh, and if I, Robert's an iffy situation, what's yes. that situation? That's well, that is a, a life a, a commitment, mm -hmm. a real strong commitment. You know, marriage is a very strong. And I knew that it would not be easy uh, because she was a strong person in herself. But I had, uh, by the time, oh, and I, I hadn't met her, her uh, parents yet, I don't think. No, I hadn't met her parents at all uh, at that time. And uh, anyway, while I was overseas, uh, after, thing, after leaving Kenya, uh, you still have the, that was uh, in my first year in Africa, I do believe. Um, I had another whole year to go. But I thought about it, and I thought that that uh, would 
that would, uh, I had one brother who married while I was overseas, a younger brother, and, uh, and I thought that if I wanted a family, and I always I was hoping for children, yes. that uh, <clears throat> she seemed more likely to give, to give them <laughs> than, than uh, my, my other friend. Did your background in the sciences <laughs> yeah. inform you? <laughs> yeah, well, that, uh, that uh, actually... I, I, uh, and I don't mean to be... That, uh, how do I put this? I, I don't mean to be overly direct, but I guess I do. All right. What, how do you describe the feelings that you had for her all, knowing that the gayness is in a box? Yeah, it, uh, it, it well, you, it, it, it's interesting when you're so young, uh, you, you, uh, you think of possibilities, but uh, I was still a, a virgin when it came to women, mm -hmm. uh, so there's a, a bit of tension there. <laughs> is, sure. is, that, is it going to work out? Absolutely. Uh, but I, the, the urge, the instinct to have children was very strong. And it's partly because I wanted to be a teacher, too. I mean, it's sort, sort of wrapped up in the same biological uh, package to, to some degree because uh, uh, when you want to have children, it's partly, uh, you know, you want to nurture some, mm -hmm. nur be a nurturer. So, uh, so I made the decision. I think it must have been... Um, in the second year of Peace Corps, that uh, I wanted to uh, to uh, marry. You decided that that's the thing. Yeah. So I I I, call, I didn't call her, but uh, we wrote, mm -hmm. and I sent her a uh, a ring, mm -hmm. a, a engagement ring, while oh I was gosh. overseas. Oh my gosh! So yeah, through the mail, and I didn't register it even, but I. It was ex fairly expensive for me, but remember, I always had enough money because I, I hardly, I don't spend a lot foolishly. <laughs> uh, so and so, I sent a ring, and uh, she, she assented, mm -hmm. and so we actually, uh, being a person who's not one to stand idle, she had us a, a wedding planned <laughs> for August, and I didn't get back to the United States until July. Oh my so gosh. within a month after I got back. You're in your wedding tux? Yeah. So I, there's not a lot of uh, rumination or what ifs or <laughs> experimental time if you might want to uh -huh. think of it in that way. <laughs> you were getting to business. She said, yeah. we're, gonna, we're going down there and... Yeah, yep. yeah. And so we were married 40, four, let's see, 40, almost 45 years. That's incredible. So, 45 years. Yes. And we had three beautiful children, three daughters. Mm -hmm. And uh, things were not bad. Uh, and I was... Uh, the only time that I was... Well, I, my friend Robert came to visit once oh. because he was in Botany. And, and he's, uh, that was in uh, about 76. That was about... And... Uh, he was, uh, it was a conference uh, in, in his field. <clears throat> well, what's it so, like to, to meet up with him after all that time? And you're married to a woman. I still liked him. Of course. <laughs> but, but how did, is it something that you, you two would talk about? Or? <laughs> no, you mean what, with uh, him or with her? Who, who are you talking about? Like he comes to see you. Yes. What's that moment like? Uh, it was... Uh, it was nice because uh, he he was married also. Sure. So he had found he had gone to graduate school after he got back from the Peace Corps in uh, Missouri, and found somebody there that actually was from I don't know how he he uh, first met her, but he married somebody that an English girl who whose family had been to Kenya. So, and she still had some relationships in Kenya. So I think he might have met her in his last year there, but uh, they married when he was at the um, University of Missouri, so we're getting his uh, PhD. So if I got my timeline right, when you had sent her the ring in the mail, he was also courting 
Uh, I don't know if he was courting that family her. family in Kenya. Yeah, well, he knew, he, he may, uh, no, I think he probably met him in the second year, because that was, remember, mm-hmm. it was my first year there. Yep. And uh, I'm not sure, I never pressed him on that. And uh, Was it like an unspoken thing after that? Uh, well, we both, uh, uh, what do you mean, about the marriages, or what was unspoken? Like, I can't imagine what it would be like to be in that situation that person comes back in my life and I don't know if I would have the ability to be like, Hey, what we had was really cool. Or I don't even know what I would say. I would just pretend like I didn't. I I'll ask the question. Uh, Did you get a hotel room? (laughs) (laughs) No, but we did go into the sauna together. Ah, you know, okay. (laughs) Just let the listeners fill in those blanks. (laughs) And, yeah. and so that, I mean, that brings me to my next question. In all those 45 years, <laughs> yeah, he's keeping us honest. Yes. He, Rick's, yeah, he is very honest. He's keeping us honest. He's very honest. In those 45 years, and particularly in that moment, did your wife ever look at you and go, sir, you're gay? Well, that's an interesting question because um, after his visit, uh, I'd already had three children because yeah, it's, uh, you mm-hmm. know, it was after my You're last one father. was born. Yes. And I had, my oldest was uh, six, and my youngest was about a year and a half or so. And I suddenly realized, I'm 30-some years old, I really am gay. Yeah. I'm not, uh, uh, I really am. That's the moment when you were like, ooh. But mm-hmm. I am still functional sure. with w- women. Sure. So as long as I'm functional... Uh, what the, what's the use of uh, rocking the boat? And, uh, it, and sex is pleasant no matter <laughs> no matter what. Even bad sex. Say that louder. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no matter what, sex is a, and it's a helpful activity. I'm a biology person. Uh, take it from that angle. Yeah. Yes, and and actually it's interesting because my I noticed my wife was a little was a little bit she was. A little masculine in a lot of ways, and uh, she she related to women though better than she did to most men. She was very jealous of any women that I looked at, and she was jealous of men too because <laughs> when I met up That's later. with them, yeah. Oh. So, ooh, ooh. so okay, now we fast forward to uh, uh, to. But there were never was a moment where she was like, Bob. No, no, she never, no, that's right. There never was a moment where she said, Bob, are you, uh, are you gay? No. And did you ever have a moment with her? Because you said she was a more masculine gal. I would never. She liked the company of the gals. Yeah, no, no, we never would have asked that. We're from a generation that uh, would not have, not have asked that even if we thought it. Absolutely. And something that me and Pat were talking about, it was it's that great Midwestern silence. Yes. You just don't talk about stuff. That's right. That's it, it could be life or death, and you just don't. That's right. That's right. So, And that's probably, it, uh, things might have gone on forever that way, but um, my middle daughter, the one that, uh, she was born in 72, mm-hmm. she was in a car crash at 23 and died. It was instant. It was not a bad thing. But uh, that was in 95. Mm -hmm. And at that time, uh, my wife is not very adaptable, by the way. After we were married, I I realized very quickly that she was not a Peace Corps type of girl. I'd been around Peace Corps girls for two years. What does that mean? Very adaptable. So anyway, we come to uh, the death of my daughter, and uh, it was all her... Her uh, tragedy, my tra- she, my mourning never entered into it. I suddenly realized, gee, she's a bit self-centered. Mm-hmm. Of course, at ninety-five, this is seven or eighty-seven, almost thirty years <laughs> at into the marriage. Years. Yes. And where did th- did 95. that factor into? Oh, I have so many questions. When you say that she's not adaptable. And what's the word? Self. She's self-oriented. Yes. How did that? Was that evident when your um, eldest daughter, your youngest daughter, 
came out as a lesbian. Oh, yes. Yeah, that, that's indeed it did. That was uh, earlier than this, but uh, I forgave her pretty much because sure. uh, being uh, biased against uh, gay people uh, didn't seem to be as, as terrible as, be, as uh, be, uh, uh, indifferent to her own husband's pain at the loss of the daughter. So that was small potatoes. So, uh, well, she... Well, I don't think I used that word, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> and she Actually, she did come around. Uh, my daughter came out as a lesbian oh, about uh, a year or two years before this, this tragedy happened. Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, she was through college, uh, uh, nearly through... She was in her senior year, I think, of college. She went to Michigan also. Uh, when she came out to uh, my wife... But I hadn't been at that. It was a uh, a dinner in a in a restaurant that she t she t uh, told my wife that uh, she was a lesbian, mm -hmm. and I think she was uh, going to start her. Uh, my daughter was going to start her first graduate year after for mm -hmm. she already had I think her bachelor's degree by then. Anyway, oh, my wife uh, was really uh, upset, and uh, what I, was she upset about specifically? what people would think of her when uh, they found out that she had a lesbian daughter. And I think that's something that's really a, a really common fear. Yeah, it could be. For the parents of gay people. Yeah. And a part of me is like, oh, that's so selfish. But a part of me understands it too. Yes. It's like... That's right. Well, the thing is that uh, if, uh, I think she may have been thinking about grandchildren, uh, which, uh, but, uh, and actually I didn't, I, I was in the dark. I, I fortunately, uh, I didn't put. It, you'd think that I would have known by this time, but uh, it never crossed my mind that it was because she was in college. And so. how did you react? Like, you, you know that you're some kind of gay. When you hear your daughter say, "I'm a lesbian," what what's your first thought? Oh, well, that's uh, probably, it's, uh, there's some genetic inclination towards that. Sure. And uh, that's the way it is. And uh, actually what helped me, uh, of course, I understood immediate, I mean, I understood the mm -hmm. possibility of somebody liking someone of their own gender. It, it seemed like a very natural thing to me. Sure. <laughs> you so, had first-hand experience, it made sense. Yeah, yeah. When she saw other people be supportive of, yeah, of but her it daughter. took her. It took her several. It took her a few years because she was still working too at that time, uh, and we actually to make a happy ending to that part of the story. We went to her wedding when the, it became legal for in New York mm -hmm. State for uh, people to marry. By that time, it's uh, I think it was uh, two thousand and eight or nine. I think maybe it was 2009, they had a wedding. I, my daughter and her uh, spouse, who they'd been together for about eight or nine years by then. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they had a marriage, and uh, my wife went to New York City with a car. And uh, you can imagine a Saginaw in, in New York City driving. <laughs> but, uh, but fortunately, by that time, they had GP, uh -huh. uh, GP systems. So that helped me a lot. So anyway, and so... Would you say... I uh, worked out. Would you say that your daughter coming out made things easier for you to come out or more complicated? Uh, I don't think it probably was either one because uh, I was still very much in the closet through all of this time. I didn't really... My wife didn't find out about me until 2004. And what was that like? How did that unfold? That was difficult, of course. That's when I came into the picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, he'd come into the picture three years earlier than that. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> but uh, what happened was that um, my youngest daughter, who's uh, a bit more like her mother than the other two, uh, was snooping around on my computer. Ah and saw some of my uh, emails, I guess, or messages. Porn. Uh, no, no. Well, messages to Rick. Pornographic emails? <laughs> yes. Somewhere in the middle? Well, yes. they're, well, they weren't exactly porn. More like nudes. Ah. 
As, uh, as it were. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which I don't consider porn. I just consider that art. I like that. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's the European. Just, uh, yeah. 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 Anyway, so uh, this was at Christmas time of all, between Christmas and the New Year. And I'm sorry, is this your daughter who finds this? That's or right. Or is this your... Okay. No, that's the youngest daughter. So your daughter finds this. Does she tell? Egg right away. Yep. How did your wife react to that? To the 2004? Yeah. Uh, she told me that I should give up my liaison or my, mm-hmm. my uh, dating or whatever you wanted to call it. I shouldn't see it, uh, my uh, boyfriend anymore. And was her problem with you seeing another man, or was her problem you seeing somebody else I think, at all? I think it was somebody else at all, to tell you the truth, because she'd, she'd already been mean to some lady, fr- <laughs> lady friends. But she basically <laughs> said, hey, quit it. Yep. And that's it. That's right. What was it like when you eventually had to, you know, I sit did, her down and tell her, hey? Well, I, well I, I said, okay. I did say, I, I, I did not... Tell her that uh, it's not something that you quit lightly mm-hmm. being gay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not something that's going to go away. But uh, but I said uh, okay, and so for a while I did cool it, mm-hmm. in the sense that uh, I didn't go as often to see Rick because it was Rick. Mm-hmm. But uh, every time I, I passed by a. He lived on the way to, uh, to uh, the theater, that I, the movie place that I went to once a week. Mm-hmm. And uh, every time I'd go by there, one time there was a rainbow. And the rainbow seemed like it was go. the treasure was right down mm-hmm. where his house was. Yeah. I can remember it to this day. It was mm. a, a wonderful kind of dream. And that was mm. after uh, this episode with, with my wife. So I just uh, said, well... Uh, Okay, but uh, I won't see him anymore. Although it's, it was really a, a dis- I just said it to satisfy her. Was she satisfied? Uh, fairly much. Uh, well, she was still suspicious, of course. But what happened was her health was deteriorating by this time. Now we're older people. Yes. And uh, by this time, she her health was deteriorating to uh, to some degree. By the time that she had passed, did she ever come to terms with that part of you? I think so. I think so. I think she, she by, uh, we never talked about it again, uh, and, uh, but she, and of course, it, remember, from our generation, we don't talk about such things. Yeah. Uh, but she never was, uh, she, she, she actually became a, uh, Easier to live with in some respects after she knew I was gay than before, uh, because she was uh, she kind of was less bossy and uh, thought about I was a person after all. I wasn't just an appendage. <laughs> I wasn't just a, you know someone that could drive her places because mm-hmm. uh, she wasn't good at navigation, so I always had to do the navigating and driving at the same at the same time. Which I know Rick's got something to say about. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just know that through all of this, um, when his daughter Julie came out, I think Bob had found his outlet yeah. because then he joined PFLAG, and he would uh, go to their meetings Wow. in support of his daughter. I, it, I don't even know if she was living with you at the time or no, not. But no, yeah. So he got to go still be out there and yep. meet people mm-hmm. and right. understand yeah, what right. everybody else was going through. And so I think that sort of helped you through those times when you didn't have an outlet. Yes, yeah, that's, that's true. I would. Well, now that I'm kind of processing the things that you've been saying, and the fact that she, you feel as though she, she treated you better after. Do you think that she was relieved? What do you think that's, what's behind that? Uh, well, I don't know. I think maybe that her own feelings towards women might have, she understood maybe her mm-hmm. own, uh, you know, her own uh, affinities better, realizing that uh, human beings don't just have feelings for uh, 
one gender or another. Yeah. That we have, uh, you know, we can have a loving relationships with any human. Uh, we, it's not just, uh, you know, a one side with one or the other. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would hope that's something that she would finally understand. And now, she had passed, and before that, you and Rick had got to know each other. Where did you guys meet? And Rick, feel, come on, jump on in. We met in 2001 at the very first Perceptions Christmas Party, which is a group for LGBTQ, you know, the community. Mm -hmm. And we met at the very first Christmas party. And what was it, you know, how did you meet? Hi, this is my friend Bob. We had a common friend who introduced us. And I was with my friends. He was with his friends. But I could, you know, looking, I mean, because I was a single gay male. And it was like, oh, I'm going to sleep with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so. Yeah, I did. <laughs> You're a go-getter. We, you yeah. go <laughs> we had a date, though. We, I invited him to a play. Uh, because it, my wife worked uh, afternoons. He pursued me, so. Sure, um, but then, degree. and I mean, we dated for maybe um, six months. Yeah, but yeah. But Did you know that he was married? No. Nope. Yeah. And that's why we only what dated for like? about six months. And then once I found out he was married and I grew up Catholic, it's like, oh my God, please forgive me. <laughs> yeah. but, so I broke it off with him. And not, not to um, step away from what we're talking about, but if you grow up Catholic, I haven't been to Mass in, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many years. For, but I'll, I'm sitting on the bus and I'm doing the rosary in my head. I'm like, what yes, is yes, this? Yes, it's, like, who am I? What? You're just trained. <laughs> you can take the little gay boy out of the catechism, yeah. but you can't take yeah. the catechism out of the little yes, gay boy. Exactly. Yes. But put that on my tombstone. Yeah. Um, anyways, as you were saying. Well, be, because I thought, oh my gosh, I am just committing, you know, I just cannot do this. This is one of the sins. You just never do adultery. That's bad. Yeah, it's and on so, the 10. Yep, it's on I, the 10. Yep, I, I <laughs> broke it off with him. Mm -hmm. But because his um, trip path to the court theater was past, going past my house, yeah. he would stop in and it'd be like, no, what do you want? Stop coming here. Yeah. And it's like he said, he's he's not too, one that just forgets about you, but then every time he'd, he'd just wink, wink, and there we'd be in bed again. <laughs> and it'd be like, no, I can't be doing this. When did it change into something where it's like, oh, we're going to be together together? Not until after his wife died. Yeah. Because even during this time, even though he was still married, um, and he was still coming over, and even though I was saying no, 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 mm -hmm. it would still happen, happen, happen. And so I got another boyfriend. <laughs> the nature of love. Yeah, I got another boyfriend oh, got another and boyfriend. moved him in the house. And you were like, take a look but at him. Who would still come over? Bob. Well, I, in like, fact, oh, I was happy. You're killing me. Actually, I was happy for Rick because I know that he wasn't alone. Yeah. And uh, actually, I gave I, I was not uh, particularly jealous of this other person. Actually, I didn't think it's he, just mean. I didn't think <laughs> I didn't think he was worthy of Rick. But uh, <laughs> anyway, I even gave that uh, that other boyfriend a Chris or a uh, birthday present. Shady, I was shady, just, shady. Uh, because I thought that. Uh, if it worked out f with the, his working out with that other person and he was happy, then I would be happy. Yeah, my boyfriend <laughs> loved him because every time for the holidays, he'd come over and like, oh, here's a present for you and a present for you. And it's like, I get a present yeah. too. And it's like, we broke up. You're not supposed to buy us presents. And my boyfriend's, no, no, keep them yeah. coming, keep them coming. But well, that's a beautiful thing. Here. That's yeah. a beautiful thing. Um, even though you, you just wanted him to be happy. Yes. But he wasn't happy with this other boyfriend. As well, sure, I think out. the proof's in the pudding, right? Here we are <laughs> yeah. sitting with you two. Well, yes. Um, so, so though I keep on saying, because he was attracted to a certain kind of person, a more dominant, forceful, you know, mm -hmm. personality, whatever. 
because Robert was like that, his wife was like that, mm -hmm. and I'm like that. Sure. Unfortunately for him, but well, that, no, I think fortunately must, for yeah, him, that, that must be what he's attracted to. So <laughs> now I'm really eager to find out. Um, is there any difference between falling in love as an older person than as a younger person? Well, I don't know. Gro growing up, for me, I mean, I was gay my whole life. I mean, ever since I can remember. And so um, when I f came out, finally, when you could have sex, when you know, you're of age or of a certain age, that's what you did. It was like, oh, I've got a boyfriend. Well, did you sleep with him yet? That was this was before the AIDS crisis, so there was anything to worry about other mm -hmm. than, you know, STDs or something. But that was what you did, and so I did a lot of it. <laughs> but I'm so glad that now in my older life that I'm with Bob. That but he's sort of I think making up for lost time because. He didn't, I even told him before we even got together after his wife died, it's like, go out, have some boyfriends, have some flings, go have go a one night stand. Out. Yeah, go do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't having none of that. So, so what I kind of heard you say is that this is one of the first forays into kind of storybook fairy tale, big red heart, L, capital L love. Yeah. And I mean, it, it's strange because. I say love all the time. I just love everything. Oh yeah, me too. You know, and so <laughs> I mean, that's just what you. That's just what I do. Mm -hmm. But, and I can say, I am in love with Bob, and yeah. that's what makes the difference. Absolutely. Because I love you. I love you. I don't even know you. Just <laughs> Matt, but I love you anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'm in love with Bob. I. So, I think it's a really important distinction. Um, what do you love most about each other? I, I love having somebody that, uh, that I can sleep next to because <laughs> I don't like sleeping alone. No. <laughs> I, Plus, he loves somebody who can cook. He yeah. can't cook. And yes, so that's true also. I cook. I hear you. And, yeah. and I do the dishes. He well, hates doing dishes. That's what everyone's looking for. And he doesn't do yard There's work too well. well. I do it, but... Not good. I've got you. I don't need to do it. <laughs> I, well, no, I think, you know, somebody's got to make the food, somebody's got to wash the dishes. Mm -hmm. There's like a metaphor somewhere in there. Yeah, we do good, actually. And I think, though, if Bob knew what he knows now, I think he would have hightailed it out of there. I'd be like, nope, 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 nope. nope, 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 nope. <laughs> hindsight, 2020. Yes. Well, well it's up been almost, uh, we've lived in the same house four and a half years now, so... I think it's pretty. And our, and our relationship was on again, off again. Mm -hmm. Even though, even though I had a boyfriend, I don't know if I, I don't think I slept with you during that period. But no, um, you you'll have to check your notes. No, on you didn't. No, you didn't. You didn't. Oh, okay, but it was such a short time. It was only four or five months. I could. It was a uh, year. Well, well, from October. Well, some of that was that he wasn't at your house. All right. The time. Right. But. You know. And something I remember you had brought up when I, I met you for the first time at that PFLAG meeting was that your mother is still alive. Yes. How many years young is your mother? Uh, she'll be 98 this month. That's incredible. Yeah. And um, what does your mother think about? My mother's still looking for girls for me to... Trying to, to find them a wife. Yeah, after I... <laughs> I've been... Because my wife passed away seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And so she she still uh, sometimes suggests that I... But I think she's getting the idea that, that Rick and I are a couple because uh, he comes with me to see her quite often. Mm -hmm. So she might be putting two and two together by this time. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes she'll say, oh, it looks like you're losing a little bit of weight. We're going to have to get you a girl who knows how to cook. And it's yeah. like, I know how to cook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're like, I'm cooking steaks and baked, yeah. twice baked potatoes And she's even home. been over to the house for dinner, so she, she knows I cook. She's had the cuisine. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. Well, it's a wonderful thing. Um, what advice would you have for younger couples? Uh, that, uh, well, uh, my advice to younger couples, uh, 
when you find somebody, you, you, you need to develop your relationship over time, not to be impatient. That it's, there's no such thing as I, an ideal person mm. and to accept people as they are and to, uh, you know, and, and uh, actually look for the best in them. There, there, are, there always will be a best wow. in them, but uh, not everything <laughs> you see will be the best. But uh, look for the best and encourage the best in another person, and you'll you'll always be along all right. And don't wow. be in such a hurry to get a boyfriend. It doesn't mean you have to be with the first person you come along with. Because yes. my Bob didn't come along until years later. Yeah. And so it's good to you know who cares how old you are. Age has nothing to do with it. You can still find love mm -hmm. even when you're in your fifties. Absolutely. But I think something uh, that I have a problem with is, not a problem with, but like I look back on the people who uh, I turned down for this reason or that reason or this reason or that reason. And some of those people are the people who actually just liked me for who I was. And you know, oh, I might not like this about him and that's why. Right. But that's not what it is. It's really about how you treat people and how people treat you. Right. Yeah. If, you could, if someone else is... Uh not thinking of the other person <clears throat> enough, over time that will wear on you. If you try to live with somebody that uh, <clears throat> does uh, is always thinking of themselves uh, and that in any situation, if they think of themselves first, uh, it's, it's a lot better to have someone that at least some of the time are uh, thinking of, of their partner's well-being and their partner's... Uh, sensitivities and, and uh, you know, realizing that uh, they, they too should have a voice in what, uh, what you decide to do and what happens. And plus you can't change someone. You think, oh, they, they do this, that irritates me. Oh, I'll just change that along the way after. There's no changing. It's just a part of who they are and you have to accept them for all their flaws and Everything else, it's, it's you know. Good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, the Gorski family. We think we can, we, we can change a man. No yeah, way. No, no. no, you can't. Yeah. There might be a few things you might be able to change, but. It's not, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, it's not going to happen. Okay, my name is Rick Farrand. I'm 62 years old. I'm from Saginaw, Michigan, and I identify as a big old homosexual. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> So this is, uh, as you heard me ask Bob, this is the question that I've always been starting with is, when did you first realize you were gay? And then when did you first realize that other people were gay too? I knew at a very young age, three or four. And I mean, again, you couldn't say, oh, I'm gay because I don't, that wasn't around at that time. Mm -hmm. But I knew I was attracted to the boys and I always wanted to like, oh, he's cute. I want to go be his friend. And it'd be like he could be three years older than me. And it's like, you want to be my friend? I don't even know who you are. Get yeah. away, you know. But I was always attracted to boys, never mm -hmm. the girls. I liked what the girls did because I was attracted to the frilly dresses and the high-heeled mm -hmm. shoes and all that other crap. And it's surprising that I was never a drag queen. But, sure. You know. Oh, but, there's still time. And I mean, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I think at this point, oh, no. We're but, not getting up in heels yeah, and waves. Yeah, and no. I mean, it was something growing up that I think even my parents could see because as I got older, I was always, I always liked to hang around with the girls because we had more in common. Um, I wasn't a sporty kid, so it was like, no, nah, I don't want to go play baseball or football or go whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go fishing or that stuff. That was too manly for me. And so, just had when, no interest. Right, exactly. Yeah. It just didn't interest me. And so when, um, I don't know how old I was, we had moved into the new house, so I was going into the second grade. And so um, because there were, just as many girls as there was boys my age in that neighborhood, the girls would always come over and say, can Rick come out? And then we'd go off. And after a while, my parents said, no, 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 no. Too many girls. There's got to be a boy to be hanging around with that many girls. You've got to have a boy. And so then the girls got smart, and it's like, okay, let's just go grab a boy, have come over. 
And say, can Rick come out? And then I'd go out and play and, you know, everything. And Uh then I'd run off with the girls and he'd go play baseball or whatever it was he did. So, I mean, but that was something that I knew they knew because why would they make me go through this? Mm -hmm. But I don't know if they were trying to butch me up or something. I don't know. But I always thought I could act more manly. But why? That's not who I am, (laughs) you know? So I just didn't do it. And I think that that's... Uh, to say, why would I? Right. I think that's such a, a, a transgressive, revolutionary question. There's right. this thing that I should be, but I'm not. So why would I do right. that? Right. And it probably would have saved me from a lot of bullying and teasing if I would have just said, yeah, sure, let's go play baseball. I don't care. I'm, you know, try it. But it's like, yeah, I don't want to. But there's also, to a certain point, I think that some gay men have the ability to um, not hide, but kind of, you know, blend into the woodwork. Right. And that was another thing that I did when when I went to school was uh-huh. because I didn't want anybody to know I was different. So I, I was very shy, very quiet. I didn't raise my hand even if I knew the question because I didn't want to have to talk or act because everything about me is, screams gay. So I didn't want... <laughs> To have any interaction or voice anything because I would be picked on. And so I was very shy and quiet growing up, and it wasn't until later in life that I became a little bit more outgoing. And once I know you, then I'm more Mm -hmm. myself. But were you shy and quiet inside? No, gosh, no. Yeah. No. When I was, I mean, I could hardly wait for... um, when my mom would be outside or something, no one would be in the house. I'd be in her closet trying on her beads and her mm-hmm. dresses and her shoes. And it was like, I was so happy just carrying a purse. And, yeah. You know. <laughs> Absolutely. But, and even then, it was like, why are you doing that? And so, uh, I'm just know. playing. I know, crazy. Not at all. No, there's yeah. something innate. I was definitely one of those kids. And I was, you know, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm doing what my brain tells me to do. Right. This is right. fun. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and I think that we are very lucky to have, um, at least I didn't have a, a completely negative reaction to that. Right, right. It was just and like, oh, that's weird. And what was it like coming out to your family? I didn't come out until years later because I always said I, I didn't want, because as I did get older, then AIDS came out. And so, and because I was a little bit more promiscuous than I should have been being Catholic and everything, but I always said... They said, you can't have premarital sex. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not going to marry this man, so I can have sex because it's not really premarital. (laughs) So that's how I talked myself into that. Correct. And so um, once I didn't, I didn't want to tell them I was gay so that they could, oh my God, who are you sleeping with? Don't do this. Don't go here. Don't do that. So I thought I wanted to tell them once I became happy, found someone and not saying you could be happy without, but of course. I just wanted them to know that I found the love of my life, and you know, and so that never happened, and so then I did finally come out to them, and it was like, we knew it. It's yeah. like, yeah, I know you did, but they were excited growing up. I would get so many phone calls. This is when I was a little bit older. I was getting calls from guys. And it was like, okay, Rick, it's a guy. And it's like, okay, let's go. And, you know, things would happen. But it'd be like, oh, my God, it's a girl. Rick, there's a girl on the phone. Oh, my God, there's a girl for Rick. And it's like they would just go crazy. And it's like, oh, tell us about her. And it's like, eh, I don't know. Yeah. She's a friend. What was it like coming to terms with your sexuality during the paranoia and, and fear surrounding AIDS? That was very difficult because, again, you had to, I mean, do you take a chance? And, I mean, I had gotten to the point because um, everybody had said, well, have you slept with them yet? And it's like, well, no, why do you have to sleep with someone right away? And it's like, well, you've got to know if you're compatible. And it was like, man, eh, if two people are in love, I always wanted to go for the love thing. If two people are in love... Whatever happens behind closed doors, as long as they're happy, who cares? And it's like, oh, they'd say, oh, that's not how it works. That's mm-hmm. not how it works. But, and so I didn't really yeah. fool around too much then. How was AIDS perceived in small town 
Oh, and, can we call Saginaw small town Michigan? Well, back yeah. back back in the day when it first came out, there was only seven people in the Saginaw area that had that no, not in the Saginaw area in Michigan that had AIDS, mm-hmm. and so we had we used to do the marches, we used to do um, the parades, fundraisers, and everything else. Um, Rand, you'd be able to tell you more about this, um, but it, it was. We did think it could happen to us. Yeah. And then when our friends started dying off because of it, and we did um, hospice, I sat for two AIDS patients. And luckily, they passed without me being there because I wasn't sure how I would handle that. But I wanted to let them know that I wasn't afraid. I was... You know, I was going to get in there and do what I had to do. And I can remember um, my mom, once the AIDS epidemic came out, whenever I'd go over to her house for um, t- t- for dinner or whatever, mm-hmm. she started to use n- ammonia to, to wash the dishes with. And it was like, oh, why are you doing that? And she says, well, it helps kill disease. And it's like, what kind of disease are you talking about? And it's like... Well, nothing in particular. I just want to be okay. And it was like, I don't... My sister then told me, she says, oh, she only uses that when you come to eat. <laughs> and I mean, I'm not HIV positive. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Of course not. I mean, people are living now with it. I've got lots of friends who are that are living with it. And But it was something that, at the time, it was so scary because there wasn't enough information out about it. Mm. And everybody was so, and it was like, you got to start somewhere. And I mean, even with us, it was like, if more people came out, and so though they, they they had groups where they were outing people, just so that more people would get out there and like, yes, I'm gay, but I never wanted to go for that because I thought it's a personal thing and it's their own private time or whatever they want to do when coming out. I don't want to force them. Yeah. So there was some things you just, I didn't do, but others did. And I think, like you said, what that story speaks to is that people were so afraid and also had no information. Right. And how do you combat fear? Right. Is you learn about something. Exactly. And that's kind of what this whole podcast is, is really about. Um, when you started seeing the the people that you knew and loved dying around you, how did the community come together? Well, we had fundraisers. We um, did uh, made quilts for those that because anybody could make a quilt for a person who had uh, died of HIV or AIDS, and so um, we did um, the quilts. We you know had groups get together and make a quilt for someone in particular or for anybody and. We did fundraisers. We we even did Hooray for Hollywood, which was our big bar at the time was Tallulah's. And so we put on, you know, we had the drag queens and the drag kings, and then we had people just lip syncing and everything. And, I mean, it was fun. I was in the chorus of several of the, and, I mean, I've got a VHS tape of that. I've never seen it. I need it's, to see yeah, it. it I, I should, I mean, we should do a few again. get <laughs> yeah. our PFLAC meeting. Yeah. But, you know, I don't even know how long it is. Probably two hours, but sure. I don't know. But um, we did all kinds of fundraisers and just helped people. I mean, we did individual, like if someone came out and said, I need help, it's like, okay, let's put on a show for you. And we'd get together and grab people to do whatever they could and, you know, did um, um, food, you know, Mm -hmm. bake sales, you know, anything that would bring in money, card parties, whatever would bring people in. And what was that, what would that money go to? It would go to their care. And so that's their health care, really anything they needed. Basically to buy the medication because the medications were so expensive. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these people who were getting the disease didn't have insurance. So it was, and I mean, a lot of them had to go to the bigger cities to get the better medication. And so sometimes we'd get money to fill up their gas tank so that they could drive to the bigger cities. And because I live in a world where everything's so accessible... I just tippy type 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 on the Google. Right, right. You know, and back in the day we didn't have that, so it was 
Did we even have computers? I don't know no. if we did. Probably some, not everybody. No, but, no, no. You know, you did. That was, was late. Thank yeah. you. But, and I think that's something important for us younger generation to understand is that the, the uh, struggle was was so immense that you guys were raising money to fill up a gas tank, to go to a big city, to get a medicine. Right, right, yeah. And it was, and I mean, you you would hear, I mean, through, I mean, there was the, um, some publications, but because Saginaw is so far away, we didn't always have access to them. But you'd get a publication, and then you could look and read and say, oh, you can find it here or mail it here or whatever. And so yeah. there would be a number sometimes. And so you'd do whatever you could just to find out what information would be out there. Did you experience any of that fear and paranoia from other gay people? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, th well, um, Randy who's going to be speaking next, he was always on the heavy side, and he was dieting at the time that this was all coming up, and he had lost a whole lot of weight, and that was one of the first signs of, you know, if you mm -hmm. lost a whole lot of weight, it's like, oh, what are you, HIV positive? And someone wow. had asked him that. Mm -hmm. So he said, yep, I'm going to show them, and so he put his weight back on, and he's never wow. really lost it since. But it's been a struggle. But So people were even... Calling out each I'm, other, yeah. I'm looking yeah, at you, yeah. and by the way that you look. Right. Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. and, you, and you could tell because sometimes it's like, it looks like one of their teeth have fallen out. Sure. And so it'd be like, oh, yeah, don't. And there were, there were, you know, like, oh, this one and this one, stay away, don't get too close. And it was like, <sighs> really? And it was, you know, because you didn't know. We didn't know. It's like... Unfortunately, unfortunately. Uh, can I interject? Of course. I remember, uh, gay people are just like all people. They, they, their human nature is always there, so that you they don't all act uh, with in sympathy or have the sensitivity that uh, you would would be optimal. They they act with their own human yeah, nature. Yeah, because it was new to all of us. And uh, so there's catty people, and there are. What we would call caddy cattiness in my earlier days, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it it was in addition to their be their, it wasn't their gayness so much as it's their human nature uh, that was coming out. And I think in, in a larger sense too, is the way that straight people treated us. We learn those skills, and we often treat other gay people that same way straight people treat us. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, uh, when did you start feeling the tide change? Um, when uh, did small town Michigan ever really accept the fact that people within the community suffered from HIV AIDS? I think so. Once, once it was out there and people, we were seeing more and more active cases of it, it was like, this is just another part of life. It's like, oh, you have... Um, the flu, oh, you have AIDS, you have um, back surgery, you have breast cancer, it didn't matter. It was like, it's sort of all sort of, wasn't, and it's almost to the point where it's like, they don't even talk about it now, which is, I mean, good, but still, I mean, it's still out there, it can still be spread, and you still don't know. You've got to be certain. I mean, now they have the new drugs. Um, I can't even think of what the name of it is, but... Uh. Prep. Yes, Truvada. yes, yes, yes. Those that, you they know. They all sound like fancy drinks. Yes, like, oh, yes, I'll have a yes, Truvada. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so those, but, um, so I don't think it's as bad, but it's still not talked about like it should be. And yeah. I mean, now the way everything's going with that sort of put aside, it's now the transgender people and they're coming up into their own. And so it's all sort of switched over to them, which they do need it because there are so many transgender murders that it's Suicides. unfortunate. Yeah, that too. <laughs> I mean, unfortunately. And I think what people my age don't understand is like put yourself into a situation where all your friends, seven, eight, nine friends that you have, imagine they are all die. And I hope that me saying that really puts it into perspective 
for for the right. for, for people my age is that that was the reality right. of 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 what it was like. Yep, I had to say goodbye to two of my old boyfriends because the, again, I was always looking for love and not just a one night stand or a trick or whatever. Sure. And so because I wanted more than what most of the guys that I dated wanted, um, they got what they want, and so they left. And so there was two of my boyfriends that I I, I had to bury because mm-hmm. ex boyfriends, but I hear you. Um, you know, but it was just sad, and it was like some of the people. I mean, we did fundraisers together, and they passed, and then you had to do a funeral for them, and I mean, it was horrible, and there was people not wanting to do too much because it's like, oh, they're HIV positive, they have AIDS, we can't, you know, and it's unfortunate, but Whew. yeah, it was it was bad, but it's it's come a long way, and it's, I think, a little bit better because I'm not single anymore. I don't feel the need to have to sleep around, even though there are times when I sort of want to, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds that, that's so good. That's, yeah, that's so, like human nature yeah, we're talking yeah. about. Not only that, but if it keeps the blood circulating. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a matter of health. Yeah. Right. But because I'm so true and honest about it, I love him so that's much. It? Yeah. Is that it? Okay. <laughs> going to ask some questions that are rapid fire questions okay and some of them are fun Ooh, is it like together or him first be second I think, or i think we can do it together okay um okay <laughs> a star is born judy garland barbara streisand or lady gaga oh, barbara streisand mm. uh, julie Gar- or judy garland absolutely what's the different <laughs> uh, biggest difference between younger and older lgbtq folks i think Older want to talk about it and have done so much, and the younger people are like, "Yeah, who cares?" Sure. Yeah, I. Um, I really don't have <clears throat> many younger people that I <laughs> that I've heard talk about things. It's so I listen to a lot of older people. <laughs> What's the one piece of advice you would give younger members of the LGBTQ community? Be who you are. Mm. Yes, that's yes, and. And go from there to be uh, have good self-esteem and to realize that it's you and, uh, and what you your needs are and you should you can be gay and proud at the same time. Who? Uh, what do you feel about younger people using the word queer? I hate it. Tell me. Only because back in the day. It's like that was a slur word. Mm-hmm. You're you're a, you're a queer. You're a sissy. You're you know. And it was like no, no. And I mean, a lot of younger people now don't mind it, but eh, to me that was a slur. So. Well, we have the privilege mm-hmm. when somebody says you're a queer, you're a sissy. We can say you're right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. correct. Yeah, it's not yeah. a. You see, at any rate, uh, um, I, I think of queer as folks. Yeah, which is uh, <clears throat> I enjoyed that. Uh, Series. Oh, classic. <laughs> um, who was your gay icon growing up? I don't know if there were any gay icons growing up. Oh, for but me, it could but be. I mean, it seems like you're a Streisand fan. Yeah, no. I like that Gore Vidal. Yeah, there you go. And when I say gay icon, I don't mean like a, a gay person. Like I'm thinking about Cher. Oh, Cher, okay. Barbara Streisand, um, Paul Lind. That kind of thing, and sometimes you don't have one. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, not your gig. I can't can't think of anybody who you, is some actor or actress. You mean sure anybody sure. in whatever culture. that yeah <clears throat> writer. Yeah, the, he was a, Gary Var, a Vidal was the writer and he wrote a, a novel. When, yeah, I know if, who he, when is. he was young. Uh, I, Cary Grant was one person that when I found out that... Oh, well, are we talking about actors we were in love with? <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Yeah. Clark Gable. Um, uh, have you ever used a dating site? Yes. No. Um, Betty Davis or Joan Crawford? 
Betty Davis. Oh, Betty Davis for me also. Absolutely. Thank you. We're going to have to fight. Um, <laughs> who was your first celebrity crush? Oh, wow. There were so many. <laughs> Pick one. <laughs> well, back in the day, um, Tony Curtis. Yeah, there you, Spartacus. Oh, yeah. Oh, he yeah. Was, oh yeah. good Lord. Oh, yes. <laughs> I guess I'm showing my age, but no. nowadays... Uh, George Clooney. I love him. Mm, ER George Pitt. Clooney. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what makes you happy? Being with Rick. <laughs> Eating. I love food. <laughs> <laughs> what gives you hope? That I die before Rick does. <laughs> Wait. Is that something you hope for? <laughs> yes. That's... What's something that gives you hope? Oh. Oh. Okay. Community, I guess, gives yeah. me hope. Yeah, okay. What's the best age? The age that you come out, mm. that you accept everybody and anybody. The best age is right now. Oof. The nowness. Nowness is the best age. What advice would you give to 20 year old you? Sleep around a little bit more. <laughs> Absolutely. Keep focused, get your education so that you could make a good living. <laughs> well, well I've got my education and I'm ready to sleep around more. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, what's your favorite fast food? I don't do fast food. <laughs> yeah. Pats do the same have. thing. Yeah, I don't do fast food very well either. Well, I do like Chinese food, but mm. is that fast food? No. Well, not the Chinese we get. So. <laughs> but like takeout, I hear you. Yeah, takeout, Chinese takeout, I like. What part of aging has uh, brought you the most joy? Being. Be more, I mean, because I can't change myself. I mean, it's like the wrinkles, the baldness. God, I wish I had a full head of hair. But, um, you know, you just got to like, eh, it is what it is. Who cares? This brings us back to your fledging um, yeah. drag career. Yeah, yeah. We can put some air up on that. Yeah. <laughs> but for me, it's not having to go to work when it's uh, there's snow outside. Oh. I can stay home and read or watch a program that I've, documentary that I've been on my DVD. <laughs> <laughs> what part of aging has bothered you the most? I think the health issues. As you age, you get things start falling apart. I don't have anything really bad. So, I mean, I'm so lucky, but I'm seeing my cousin who's my same age. He can barely get up out of a chair. Mm -hmm. uh, mine is... Uh, bothers me the most is my hesitation to uh, to do something uh, new instead of going ahead and uh, for travel for example when you when you've done travel and when you've been a lot of places there's a certain hesitancy of going out and doing something new again but uh, and it's I don't like to I don't like that hesitancy I think it would be good mm. if I could just uh, not think about uh, the, all the risks, but I, I still, I think of the risks. For, for example, in travel, mm -hmm. in uh, he likes to plan things, driving, and uh, and what if you get sick when you're not near where you're used to? I, 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 I'm very happy to be in Saginaw, even though it's not. For a lot of people, they wouldn't be happy in such a small area, but there's so many things you can do, and there's so much available. That uh, it really you should want to go out and do something new occasionally. Planning makes me feel better too. No, just get the car. <laughs> no. the pants. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you could ask me any question, what would it be? No. No, I'll pass. <laughs> 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 Security? Yeah. <laughs> Thank That's you. Wonderful. wonderful. You're very welcome. Yay. <laughs> now I can go potty again. Yes, <laughs> 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 This has been a production of Ann Arbor District Library. For more podcasts, visit AADL.org.
www.thepeopleshistorycenter.org slash podcasts.